bad, bad camera, bad lens, bad camera. Anyway, so we've now got a bad camera and a bad lens and together they should take some really bad photographs. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. Thanks for checking in. Over the course of this channel and before, I've bought quite a lot of old film cameras and I bought most of them when they were really, really cheap in, gosh, I don't know, around 2006, 7, 8, <clears throat> that kind of time. At that time, you couldn't give those cameras away hardly and nobody wanted them. Digital was just coming up in its first, you know, bloom of success and you just couldn't give them away. So I got into the habit of buying them up and when you buy so many, eventually you'll buy some as well as ones that work nicely. You'll buy some that don't work and that don't and that have faults that, you know, render them faulty, less than perfect, or just simply useless. And I've gathered a few of those over the years, and um, I've actually got quite a few of them. On top of that, I've got cameras that have conked out in use. I've bought them as working cameras and lenses, and they've gone wrong in use. And then on top of that, I've got cameras and lenses that yeah, I'm sorry to say, I personally, I have broken in use or trying to fix them. I've broken them even more. So, yeah, I'm going to hold my hand up to guilt for some of that damage. And I'm going to be showing you some of those today. Uh, so that's it. That's today's episode. Broken cameras and lenses. Let's let's ease in gently. Let's 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 not let's not kind of you know, go in too quick. Let's season jet now. I'll show you a nice, small, broken lens. It is very broken, but it's a nice, small, broken lens. And it's this one. It's the it's the Fed 10 coated lens um, that I like so much. I've actually extolled this lens's virtues many times on this channel. There is an uncoated one, an uncoated version of this lens nice but a bit lacking in contrast um and very much a 30s lens this one's a nice very very nice it deals with colors beautifully but it's broken i'll tell you what's broken about it and what is broken about it will become very apparent when i turn the focusing tab oh no that's not the focusing tab this is the f uh, right can you see me not turning the focusing tab there? I'm not turning it because it doesn't turn. It's seized solid. Look, that thread there, that thread there, the focusing helix is seized dead solid. It is absolutely tight. I don't know what's got into this lens. This is not of my doing. This, this lens came to me not in a good way. It wasn't very easy to turn when it came to me but it did turn but you know after I'd left it six months not used it for six months after that it wouldn't move and so I don't know what to do with it I think uh, the whatever's happened has gone right through all the concentric barrels of the lens because look the aperture tab that won't shift either that is absolutely locked dead solid and I know it. I'm not going to try and shove it any any further because I know it is locked dead solid and it just won't move. So all the concentric rings have corroded together. So what's the fix for this? What do you think might be a good fix for this? That's what I forgot to say. If you think of, if you know any fixes for any of these problems, any of these faults, do shout out, let me know in the comments box below, please. That would be really good. Um, so what would your fix be? I'll tell you what my fix is going to be. I'm going to dip this, I'm going to soak this rather, not dip it. I'm going to soak it in a bath of solvent to just dissolve whatever crap is there. I don't think it's corrosion, I don't think it's corroded. 
I think it's just dirt and, and gunk that's got up there and dried out and uh, I don't know. I don't think it's corrosion anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sit it in a bath of ISO or something similar for, um, you know, a week or something like that. Give it some real good soaking treatment because nothing else is going to fix it. I've got, I'll have to take all the glass out of it. Much of the glass is already out of it, stored in a box which is somewhere. I don't know where I put that flipping box. I think it's on the table. But, yeah, all the rest of the glass will have to come out and then it will have to be soaked for a week in some sort of solvent. I think ISO is going to be a good one to do it. I did think of doing it in petrol, but then I thought, no, petrol is really, really volatile and it stinks and you just cannot get the stench out and it might damage the coatings. So petrol would be the wrong thing to use. I think ISO would be gentler and nicer. But if you know any better way to fix this lens up, to free it up, it's totally, you know, stuck and won't move, let me know. I've got a Konica C35 that doesn't work. These are nice rangefinders. This one was sent to me by a viewer who sent me a bunch of gear, a bunch of kit for review and, uh, you know, stuff I might be interested in. And he sent me this amongst it. And it's a real neat little camera. I don't know why I'm opening the back. I'm closing the back door. It's a real neat little camera. Look at that. That's very, very small, neat, light and lovely. I really like that camera. If you've seen the channel before, you might know that I do really appreciate small cameras. I think small and portable are, you know, really great things to work towards and to incorporate into anything really as a design principle but certainly something like a camera which there's no virtue in it being large you could go too small of course but i don't think we're anywhere near that size with this camera it's a beautifully usable little thing lovely clean top deck a consumer camera of its day but with a nice lens on there there's uh what's on here a 2.8 mil. So you could do some nice work with that. This is not a lens that you need to be ashamed of. Lovely clean top deck. Lovely cleanly shaped wind lever. Leaf shutter. Nice and quiet. These are very quiet, these leaf shutters. This is a shooter's camera, a real shooter's camera. Look at the focusing tab. How cool is that? Look, that's just so reachable and usable when you, you're using this camera out shooting it. This one wants a little bit of lubrication, but how cool and how simple and easy is that to use? Uh, it's got a very short throw as well. It's about a third. Is it even a third? I don't think it's even a third of a turn. I think that's about a quarter of a turn, if that. Maybe more like a fifth. That's a really, really short throw. Um, what else to say? It's a very small lens. It's a very quiet shutter, and this shutter didn't work at all when I got the camera, but now it does. Kinda. You can see that it doesn't quite close as readily as it should. Watch. So it does close, but that last bit of closure 
that takes a little time. So my cleaning of this shutter needs to go a bit further. I did clean this shutter. It was absolutely filthy and wouldn't fire at all. This camera came to me covered in a layer of, I don't even know what it was, grease, grime, chip fat. It was like it had been in a, it was like it had been stood over a cooker that was cooking only chips continually for 40 years since 1983. It was like it was stood in a cloud of permanently emanating chip fat. That's how it came to me. It was like coated in this stuff. It was horrible, actually. It was all sticky and uh, like that. It was all sort of just... It was a real mess and it's now less of a real mess, but it's still a real mess. It's still, a, it's a mess now. It might even be a real mess. It might even be quite a mess, I don't know, but there's messiness involved. It's not a functioning camera. You can see that the shutter doesn't work terribly well. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else doesn't work terribly well, if at all, is the rangefinder. The rangefinder doesn't work at all. There's no rangefinder patch. So it can't move if there isn't one there, can it? So there's no rangefinder patch at all on that camera. And I don't know why that is. I'd have to take the top cover off and I, I will do that because this is a camera that I'd like to save. I am fooling around a bit, being a bit flippant, but this is actually a camera that I would like to save and that I am intending on saving. I've already cleaned the shutter up all nice. How did I do that? I just flooded it with ISO, that's all I did. I just flooded it two, three times with ISO. That cleaned all the crap out of it. I was able to get the rest out with a little, uh, one of them, you know, um, cotton buds is what they're called. So come the appropriate time, I'll get the top off there and clean up the range finder. And then we should have a nice working-ish Konica C35, so so that will be a day that I'll be pleased to see because look at the beautiful modernity and cool little form factor of this camera. It's a lovely little thing, absolutely beautiful little thing, and I really can't wait to shoot this one. And I'll let you know as soon as I get this one fixed up. Any ideas on how to fix it? Any ideas on helping me fix it? What to do? Any hits, hints? Hits? hints, tips, tricks, that kind of thing, gratefully received. Thanks. Here's one that I was um, improving and during the course of improving, I actually broke it. Now, I'm not proud of that. I'm really not proud of that. In fact, I was really, really sad when I did it. I really didn't want it to happen. And I was really upset when it happened and, and and I just could have given myself a right old kick in the trousers. But look what I did. I broke off the flipping self-timer lever. I broke it. And do you know how I came to break it? I was undoing it. It's one of it's one of the later self-timer levers and it has two little prongs points for undoing with a lens spanner you know one of them little things with two points on the top so i was undoing it and it had just been in there too many years it had corroded in there and as i undid it boink it snapped off so now the top of that screw or the uh, the body of that screw rather don't know if you can see there you might be able to see is actually still in the hole and this camera which was my only remaining Zorky 4 after I uh, 4k rather after I'd given the rest away or sent them to various people or you know given them to enough young photographers who are interested in all the rest of it this is my only remaining one this is the one I kept for myself and you know what I was doing to it I was improving it and I'll tell you what I was doing. 
these 4Ks don't have strap lugs on the bodies. There are a rare number of 1967-68 Zorki 4s that have this ribbed nylon covering on the body, same as a 4K, and strap lugs, one there and one there, right? So I was transferring the body shells from the 4 with the strap lugs to the 4K so that I would have then ended up with a Zorki 4K with strap lugs, one of the, possibly the only ones in existence. And while I was doing that, I had to take off the flipping self-timer lever and... That kind of thing. Like that, that, that was how I felt. That was how I felt like a proper, proper Charlie. Have you ever done something like that? I mean, these are old machines. They're not making these anymore. They are cheap machines still, and they were cheap machines back in their day. But I don't want to break them because I like them. I love them and they're, they're not unique. What's the word? They're not being made anymore anyway. They're not making any more of them and these are not coming out of the factories anymore and their light will not be seen again. So for clown-handed fools like me to start breaking them, that is something that just shouldn't be happening. But it did and it's going to happen. Why? Because... Because why? Because what? Why? Because they're old machines. They're old machines. They will break down. They daft people like me will work on them and, you know, the screws will weaken over time and the heads will break off when you unscrew them and all sorts of silly things will happen that wouldn't happen otherwise. But there we are, at the end of the day, it is only a self-timer delete. It's not a terrible thing. It's not the end of the world. I can put a little, I don't know, plastic black thing over there to make it look factory. It doesn't matter. I mean, however, uh, when are you going to use? When are you going to use a self-timer on one of these cameras? don't think I've ever used one. Even back in the day, in the 70s and 80s, I hardly ever used the self-timer because it was awkward. You couldn't see really what you were photographing. You couldn't really focus terribly easily. It was a, you know, you had to pop quickly round and get back into the position before the thing ran out. And, you know, I only ever remember using it a handful of times, even back in the day. So it's not a big thing. And after all... It is only a self-timer delete. So I'm not going to worry too much, but it did proper, proper brass me off at the time. There we are. That's one I have damaged myself. Right, can you see what's broken on this camera? No? Well, perhaps if I do that, that might make it a bit more evident can you see that the whole mounting plate for the lens is moving i don't know what's behind there this is annoying because i like these practica cameras they're they're nothing fancy they're just a, they're a cheap no frills basics slr and they're a pretty good one for what they are um and they work okay and they work nicely and they keep working and uh, and everything's fine. So so I buy them up now and again when I can, but when I see them cheaply enough for a bargain enough price. This one I got for a really bargain price and it's now becoming obvious why I did. I paid £5 for this camera with a lens. It was said to be in perfect condition, but it's not because the mounting plate for the lens is loose. And I don't know how you get to it. In fact, even if we look in the back of the camera. Let's 
set it to B maybe and find out. Oh my goodness, there are some mounting screws visible. I don't know. I don't know if you will be able to see in the top corner and in the bottom corner. Some mounting screws actually visible. So maybe this is one I can actually fix. Wow, maybe, maybe this is camera technology that I can actually fix. And do you know what? Even more, maybe I can actually fix it here and now. Just wait a flipping jolly old minute. Hmm, I think I've been a little over optimistic. We haven't fixed it here and now. It's still loose and it's not easy to get to those screws but at least i know now that those screws are there and that they are visible and that you know i might be able to with some dexterity actually actually fix this one that would be nice wouldn't it to actually achieve some sort of fixing that would be cool so that would be good, but if I can't, well, all right, it's it's a good spares camera. Why do I need a spares camera? Oh, is it for all those successful repairs I do? Actually, no, I, I just need a spares camera. I think I just need a spares camera to be able to say I've got a spares camera. It's quite a good thing to be able to say, even if I don't do many repairs. And on a serious note, maybe it saves it for... Somebody else who needs spares, I don't know. It did come with a nice lens. And in a minute, I'm going to do something I thought was quite resourceful. Here's my other Practica camera. This is my MTL 5B. And this one's got a bad lens. It doesn't like to focus. It's a bit hard to focus. And the aperture stuck. It's a good camera, but it's got a bad lens. So here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to take the bad lens. Now check this for ingenious people. We're going to take the bad lens and we're going to put that bad lens onto the bad camera, bad, bad camera, bad lens, bad camera. Just remember that, right? Cheeky, naughty. Anyway, so we've now got a bad camera and a bad lens and together they should take some really bad photographs. But as a counter to that, We're going to put the good lens on the good camera and all right, I, I am being a little bit flippant because I can't seem to help being a little bit flippant, but you know, with these old cameras, you often do have to do a little bit of mixing and matching. They're not all working as they did do back in the day. They're not all in as good condition as they were in back in the day. But if you've got a couple, especially really cheap ones like this, this combo is really, really cheap. Carl Zeiss, Jena, Tessar, plus a Practica, 20 quid, 30 quid. You know, if you have a couple of those, um, you can mix and match if there are problems either with the body or with the lens. And uh, so I've ended up with a nice M42 camera with uh, a nice 50 mil. 2.8 lens. Pretty good, huh? Right, here's a lens that's still broke. 
Well, I mean, it's not broke. Well, it is broke. I'll t it's got scratches. It's got loads and loads and loads of tiny, tiny scratches. Sometimes they got they get called cleaning marks, but whether they come from cleaning or anything else, what they actually are is scratches and damage, and this lens has got them by the pailful. I'll tell you what lens this is. It's a really special one. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena Flectagon 20 millimeter f4. This isn't the 2.8. There was a 2.8 version. This is the f4 version, and it's in exact amount. I bought this lens two, three years ago, maybe a little more ago. For 50 quid, because it was in very bad condition, it was advertised in very bad condition, and that proved to be true. Yeah, that proved to be true. So I bought this lens in real poor condition, and I bought it as a real mess, and I thought, well, I'll try and polish it a little bit. Um, and there's an episode from, I don't know, two, three years ago where I've tried to do that, I think I used, did I use metal polish or something on it? I can't remember, toothpaste. So I gave it a jolly good polish anyway, by hand, this big front element. And it just wouldn't do very much. It cleaned up a bit. Um, some of the scratches polished out, just really the, the very most minor ones. And I used it, but it was still very foggy, still very hazy and it just didn't really look that great so i obviously hadn't got to the root of the problem if i'm i mean i'm looking at this lens now and i can see kind of fungus patterns not where it's growing now but where it has been growing on the edge of the lens you may or may not be able to see that but it is there, tiny little tendrils, fingers just growing upwards. That's what fungus looks like, or one of its manifestations anyway. So I haven't got to the bottom of it. So I think the only thing I can do, the only thing I can do with this is to get some very fine polish, some very fine glass polish and polish off the coating because what's on there is not doing very much the marks that are on there look like they almost look like it's been blasted with something almost like it's been in a sandstorm or something i don't think it has but there's a sort of a blasting pattern on there and it's it's not very deep none of it's very deep it's all very shallow and light and that's why it will polish out i know it will polish out it's going to take some elbow grease but that is going to be an upcoming episode seeing what we can do with this it was laying on a shelf for two three years there's not much i can do with it i can't really sell it because it's a mess all I can do with it really is fool around with it and see what I can do and what removing that those scratches will do. You can see it's got a coating on it now. Removing the scratches will probably remove the coating and there you go. That will perhaps cause some problems with drop in contrast. I don't know. We'll just have to see. It certainly can't be worse than it is. We'll do something about it in an episode coming up soon. So there's some broken kit. It's going to happen if you buy enough cameras, if you fiddle around with enough cameras, if you improve in inverted commas enough cameras and you're not a proper camera tech. It's going to happen. Even if you are a proper camera tech, it's still going to happen because these are old, old machines now. And, um, you know, it's just entropy. 
I think that's what they call it. Anyway, I hope it's been of some interest looking at these projects. Um, they are kind of projects and I do try to save every camera that I can. Sometimes you can't. They can be kept for parts so that in the future there's at least some bits and pieces to keep these things going. At least for the next few years. So there we are. Well, that's it from me for today, everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope it's been, I don't know, I hope it's been enjoyable in some way or other. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please hit like, subscribe and ring the bell. I'll be back soon for some more xenography. I do hope you've enjoyed this one. I just said that, didn't I? So all that remains for me to say, I mean, I do still hope you enjoyed it, even though I said it twice. Many thanks to subscribers. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you also to patrons. Many, many thanks to patrons. To you two for your support. So that's it from me for now. I will see you next time for some more xenography. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Cheerio.